Okay, so error handling is important to consider when creating a robust application, and here we'll cover error handling using the ESP IDF. And we'll start with an overview of error handling, and then we'll talk about error codes, converting error codes to error messages, using the ESP error check macro, and error handling patterns or strategies that you may want to consider in your development. So to get started, let's take a look at the Espressif documentation. So the errors we're discussing here are runtime errors, and again, handling these errors is an important aspect of developing robust applications. And we can have a couple of different types of errors. The first type mentioned here are categorized as recoverable errors, which are errors indicated by functions through return values, or error codes. Unrecoverable or fatal errors can result from failed assertions. For example, using the assert macro and equivalent methods. And if we follow the assertions link, you may be familiar with the assert function defined in assert.h. But when asserting a value of the type ESP error type is equal to ESP OK, the ESP error check macro is used instead of assert. And so CPU exceptions are considered fatal, which could be access to protected regions of memory, illegal instructions, etc. Then you also have system level checks like watchdog timeout, cache access error, stack overflow, stack smashing, heap corruption, etc. And this guide explains ESP IDF error handling mechanisms related to recoverable errors and provides some common error handling patterns. And I'll show you some patterns used in the course source code as well. And you can always check out this link for instructions on diagnosing unrecoverable errors. And you may want to mark this as a favorite in your ESP32 resources as you're eventually bound to run into the panic handler, which handles these fatal errors. So let's move on to error codes. Most ESP IDF specific functions use ESP error type to return error codes. And ESP error type is a signed integer type, which you can find in the ESP error.h file from the ESP IDF. And success or no error is indicated with the ESP OK code, which is defined as zero. And common error codes for generic failures like out of memory, invalid argument, and timeout, etc., are defined here as well. And you also have other error codes defined in various ESP IDF header files, also using preprocessor defined, starting with the ESP error prefix. For example, there are NVS related error codes defined in the non volatile storage.h file. And here the ESP error NVS base is defined as the starting number for the error codes. And then each subsequent error code is defined as an offset from the base. And converting error codes to error messages can also be useful when debugging by displaying the error messages as strings on the terminal monitor. This is possible for each error code defined in ESP IDF components. And the ESP error type can be converted to an error code name using the ESP error to name or ESP error to name underscore R functions. For example, we'll use ESP error to name for our non volatile storage functions. And in this example, we call NVS open, which returns its status to ESP error. And if it didn't return successful or ESP OK, we can then use ESP error to name and display its result using printf or ESP log. So if you want to find out the exact reason that a function fails, try using these functions. And the way it works is, is it finds the error code in a pre-generated lookup table and returns its string representation. And here you have the lookup table defined here, where each entry in the table is an error code and message pair. And ESP error to name underscore R can be used when you need to also consider system error codes. So here, if the error code is not found, then str error underscore R is used. OK, so back to the ESP error check macro. The ESP error check macro checks the ESP error type value rather than a bool condition. And if the argument of ESP error check is not equal to ESP OK, then the error message is printed on the console and the abort function is called. And on the console, your error message will look like this. So here in the documentation, it says that if the IDF monitor is used, addresses in the backtrace will be converted to file names and line numbers. And the first line mentions the error code as a hexadecimal value and the identifier used for this error in the source code. And the subsequent lines show the location in the program where ESP error check macro was called and the expression which was passed to the macro as an argument. Then the backtrace is printed, which is part of the panic handler output common to all fatal errors. 
And if you don't want to abort, but still have the convenience of this macro, you can always use the ESP error check without abort macro. Okay, now let's review some strategies for handling these errors. So the documentation recommends the following strategies. You can first attempt to recover, and depending on the situation, we may want to try the following methods. You can retry the call, like in the below where the function call is reattempted while the result is timed out. Or you can attempt to deinitialize the driver and reinitialize it again, and or fix the error condition using an out of band mechanism. For example, reset an external peripheral which is not responding. And for an example of where we attempt to recover from errors, I'd like to show you the NVS initialization that we use in main. So here, if the NVS flash init function returns with either of the following errors, then we erase the flash and reinitialize it. So this is one example of attempting to recover. And another possible response would be to propagate the error to the caller. And here's an example of that. And finally, you can designate certain functions as unrecoverable errors by using ESP error check. So you'll need to decide for yourself when using ESP error check makes sense in your application. As mentioned here, many ESP IDF examples, and I often do this myself, use ESP error check to handle errors from various APIs. And this is not the best practice for applications and is done to make example code more concise. So it may be convenient to use, however, you'll need to put more thought into error handling and apply the appropriate error handling patterns when you need your firmware to be production ready. All right, so that's it for now, and see you in the next lesson.